A very good morning to all and welcome to NPARC Spotlight. My name is Leslie and I'm from the National Biodiversity Centre at the National Parks Board. Thank you all for joining us on Zoom and YouTube this morning. If you're new here, we're glad to have you with us. And if you've joined us before, welcome back. It is now the Festival of Biodiversity. Organised by NPARCS in collaboration with the Biodiversity Roundtable, this is our annual celebration of our national heritage. This year, our festival is online with several activities from the 5th to the 26th of September. Listen to online talks, download arts and crafts activities, or head outdoors to join habitat enhancement sessions or guided walks for small groups. There's lots to do and learn, so check out our website, nparks.gov.sg slash festival of biodiversity for more details. This month's special edition of NPARC Spotlight will feature our partners from the biodiversity community. We are online every weekend from 10.30 to 11.30 in the morning, so be sure to join us on Zoom or YouTube. Today, we'll be hearing from an active volunteer from Friends of Marine Park. Tomorrow, we'll learn about the great work that our citizen scientists have done as part of the Garden Bird Watch program. And over the coming weeks, we'll be joined by our friends from the Raffles Bandit Langer Working Group, National University of Singapore and Otter Working Group. Here is an overview of today's session. For those on Zoom, if you have any questions during the talk, please send them to me, Leslie, as a private message using the chat and we'll try to address a few of them later on. And now let's give a warm welcome to Sam Shu Tin from Friends of Marine Park, presenting Finding Community in Conservation. Take it away, Sam. Okay, let me do this. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So hi, everyone. Thank you, Leslie, for the introduction. I am Sam. And for today's session, I will be sharing my experience as a youth volunteer at the Friends of Marine Park community. And I also apologize if I happen to fade in and out of the screen. Okay, so here's a little about me. I am a coral scientist at the, coral, uh, at the Tropical Marine Science Institute, National University of Singapore. And my research largely focused on understanding how corals respond to the impacts of coastal development and climate change. So we are also working on developing coral restoration strategies that are best suited for our marine environment. So I spent a lot of time underwater assessing reef health and checking out coral transplants and this photo, of course, is, was not taken in Singapore, okay? This was taken in Raja Ampat, or Diverse Dream Destination. And this is Singapore. And this is actually one of the best days that I have recent. I think it was just last month, okay? So I am also the co-founder of our Singapore Reef a Community Initiative that aims to promote awareness on Singapore's marine biodiversity and the impacts of marine debris through dive cleanups and educational outreach activities. And because of my involvement in both marine science and public engagement, I'm also part of the Friends of Marine Park community. So the Friends of Marine Park community was initiated by Mr. Desmond Lee back in 2017 to bring different users of Marine Park together and involve them as stakeholders in policy planning, coming out with guidelines and public engagement programs for Sisters Islands Marine Park to encourage more sustainable use and enjoyment of the park. So this unique network is administrated by NPARCS and supported by the Ministry of National Development. So before I go into more details, let me share a bit more about our first marine park. So the Sisters Islands Marine Park is spans about 40 hectares around Sisters Islands and along the western reefs of St. John Island and Pulau Tukuko. So the big Sisters Island is open to public 7 to 7 every day and all other areas within the marine park are strictly for conservation and research. So this area was selected as a conservation site because of the variety of habitats, including coral reef, sandy shores, seagrass meadows, and the rich marine biodiversity within the waters. So these are some of the animals we see pretty often while diving in our waters. So we have cuttlefish, 
we have seahorse, rays, coral, a lot of newly brown, and even sharks. So while, if you're lucky, you can even spot a turtle or pink dolphin along your, on your way to the southern islands. Okay, so historically, we have recorded more than 250 coral species. That is almost one third of the entire coral species in the world. So Sisters Islands is also, they are also regarded as a mother reef because of the strategic location that it can seed and supply coral larvae to other reefs. So our coastal habitats such as coral reef, they are impacted by natural stresses such as predation, coastal development, unsustainable fishing methods, and um, irresponsible diving habits. And also together with the slow growth and self-recovery of corals, they, they, can, they cannot keep up with scientists' predictions of stronger intensity and this increased frequencies of thermal stress events. So without our intervention in reef recovery, we can potentially lose the ecosystem that can support a lot, a lot of people. So Sisters Island Marine Park is a no-take zone, meaning no fishing is allowed there. So it's definitely a good start for us. So with good management and responsible use of the area, the marine park can protect and support the precious marine life that we have. And I want to introduce you to the Blue Plan. So the Blue Plan is a ground initiative that presents a vision of the marine community. And this document that is put together by the team is presented to the government every 10 years. And in the Singapore Blue Plan uh, 20, 2009, the second, which is the second installment of the Blue Plan, the community recommended that the government should work together more with civil society and the researchers to establish more integrated coastal management policies. And this led to the formation of Friends of Marine Park Community. And here we have the latest blue plan, the 2018 blue plan. So we can read more about it here at this link. Okay, so in a nutshell, the latest Blue Plan document um, proposed six recommendations to conserve the coastal and marine ecosystem. So we have six recommendations. So over here, we have formal management, management of uh, system of marine environment, sustained funding for research programs, improve laws to protect the marine environment, to have better coordination between agencies and researchers, more measures to protect marine habitats and to also include information about marine life, marine habitats in formal education. So with that, the Blue Plan also identify more areas for protection. And with, with the formation of Friends of Marine Park, a platform where different stakeholders can work together, we also hope to contribute to these efforts. So here, this is my big family of Friends of Marine Park community. Okay, so the Friends of Marine Park, it brings together people from all walks of life, from different expertise. We have boaters, divers, scientists, fishermen, kayakers, educators, amongst many, to pursue the common goal of managing the marine park as a place for all, for the community, by the community. Okay, and this network, it also encourages members to collaborate, talk to each other for the long-term survival of life in our seas, and also to discuss and develop ground out initiative and guidelines to boost marine conservation efforts. So the communities always keep three main thrusts in our mind, protect our islands, to inject vibrancy to the marine park, and to also cherish our natural and cultural heritage so that we can pass them down to our future generation. So we can see the Citrus Islands are also illustrated through the two um, triangle. Okay, right? So we have the small and big Sisters Island reflected here. And the shape also resembles the sails of the Colic boats, which once raced around our southern islands. So we also work in uh, five different domains. We have education outreach. Okay, so these are the team to share. Uh, the main goal is to share learning opportunities that connect people to nature with the marine areas as our living classroom. So we have the heritage team to cherish and conserve our shared highland heritage by appreciating our cultural history and also continue to protect nature so that these stories will keep going on and pass down to the future generation. Of course, public service is very, very important to help to facilitate community involvement in policy planning and processes as part of good government effort of the Sisters Island Marine Park. We have the researchers to help strengthen our understanding of our rich and resilient biodiversity to better inform management decisions and conservation at the Sisters Islands Marine Park. Lastly, you have sea sports. 
So sea sports is made out of different, different um, recreational uh, users of the sea. You have the boaters, you have the anglers, you have the divers and kayakers. Okay, so you also want to protect Sister Island Marine Park by keeping our passions relevant and our actions responsible. And because of this, if you have a clean and healthy sea, you actually get to enjoy your sports even more. So for me, I float mainly between sea sports and research team to provide my inputs based on my experiences in these two areas. So as a coordinator, we help to manage uh, multiple stakeholders activities and to also facilitate discussion during the meetings. So here are also some issues that we have tackled as a community. Okay, so this is a picture of how an anchor chain can actually break and abrade corals if they happen to land on coral reef. And if it's not managed properly, these anchors, they can also damage huge corals like this. So to encourage boaters and divers to visit the island, but at the same time, ensuring minimal damage to the coral reefs around the Sisters Island Marine Park, the community proposed mooring buoys to be installed around big and small Sisters Islands to facilitate proper docking for these vessels. And now we have six of them around Sisters Island. So also being in a community, it helps to amplify your voices and efforts. So for instance, in June, during the circuit breaker period and during this pandemic, um, marine scientists, we noted that there are some corals that were bleaching. Okay, so how does it happen? So corals like you and me, we have a special friend, right? So they have a symbiotic relationship with this uh, single cell algae called zooxanthellae. The corals host the zooxanthellae and in return, the zooxanthellae provide food and color for the corals. So without the algae, the corals is deprived of its major source of nutrients. It then turns white, whoops. It turns white or become pale. It can get sick easily also. However, if the environmental conditions return back to normal or if the stresses are removed, these corals, they can recover back to their original state. Okay, if not, if you see fairy things growing on a, uh, on a coral, it's probably that the corals are already covered in turfing algae. And through these coral bleaching events, we can get a lot of data. So to help understand the extent of coral bleaching and also to find out the winners and losers of this recent episode, marine scientists urge divers to report their sightings of coral bleaching or also on any other form or any other kind of symbiotic organisms. So with Friends of Marine Park community, we also help to share on social media and various platforms to amplify the message. So another recent incident is the box jelly sightings at the marina by the marine stewards. So because the community is in direct contact with the relevant agencies, the response time is short and therefore advisories and information can pass down to the public quickly. So the community also support the NPARC team with their efforts in public engagement and public outreach, such as being guides for intertidal walks at Scissors Island. And these are some of them sharing fun facts about the marine animals that they found during the walk. There is also a turtle hatchery at the Small Sisters Island. So this photo was taken when Prime Minister, Mr. Uh, Prime Minister, Mr. and Mrs. Lee visited the Sisters Island Marine Park. And as a volunteer, I also have the opportunity to help release the turtle hatchlings. So the experience itself was magical. So before the turtles were released, we have to measure them, count them, and see if they are in a good shape before we can let them go back to the sea. And then we place them near the shoreline and watch them walk slowly back to the sea. So cute, right? They're so tiny. So you can see a whole group of us clearing path for them, making sure that you know they walk the right way. Okay, and then we go, we send them off to the sea. And sometimes you also go diving to look for treasures. So for instance, this is Nappy. So Nappy is a little Neptune's cup sponge. And this species is thought to be locally extinct. So now they are in good hands. So yay. So there was also this dive where we chanced across a booboo trap where um, there's some fish inside. So after taking a closer look, 
we found out that this box fish, it looks kind of special. So we took photos and we sent a photo to our fish experts at the museum. And we were pleasantly surprised that it was a rare find. So this fish, the short snout box fish, was actually last recorded back in Singapore in 1937. So this is also counted like a rediscovery of a new, newish species. Okay, so I submitted it to the museum and this is actually published. So we, we also encourage um, divers or even if you, anyone, if you chance across weird looking species, take pictures and send to the researchers. Maybe you'll find something new in Singapore. Okay, so the community also likes to explore. So there is also a community space at St. John's Island that we are hoping to use for future public engagement programs. So the team headed there at low tide for a recce trip to see what kind of animals we can find at that area. And these are some of the gems that we find. We have sea cucumber, a lot of sea stars, sea grass. And this is interesting because they are actually flowering. So it's actually a good sign. And we have a lot of corals right there. And of course, how can we miss this marine debris? Look at those bottles. I see already my hands really very itchy. I want to pick them all up. Okay, so what happened was because of all this, we, during this year's National Day, a group of us went to the beach to clean up the area. Okay, and this was organized by the education team of Friends of Marine Park. And within a short one hour, we picked up a total of 26 bags of trash and they weigh almost 130 kg. So all these trash are backed up and then it will, um, the, the, it is backed up, packed nicely and disposed back on land properly. Okay, so the Friends of Marine Park community, we also have events like Festival of Biodiversity and ADEX, the Dive, Asia Dive Expo to share our experiences and also to raise awareness on local marine conservation efforts. So this year, ADEX went virtual and we also took the opportunity to arrow, uh, I mean showcase our people and our work. Okay, so thanks to the ADEX team, we managed to run a series of four sessions to introduce our teams. So we have the C Sports team talking about how you can actually have a balance between um, having a responsible recreation and healthy reef to keep them healthy. And also we have the educators talking about how to transform Sisters Island Marine Park into our living classroom. We have the scientists that come on board to talk about how resilient our coastal and marine biodiversity are, um, even though they're under a lot of stress from coastal development and habitat loss. And lastly, all those stories from the past. Okay, it's really a time capsule where our friends from the culture and heritage team brought us back Beef on um, all the way back to life on the island and also how the na our natural heritage, the coral reef and the rock there are also very important. And also to keep online engagement going, the younger ones also took over our Instagram account. So do follow us to find out <clears throat> more about our marine environment and the animals living within and also to keep updated on what the marine community is doing. So also to learn more about what we have in Singapore, you can also check out these resources. So you have this biodiversity of Singapore and this is from the um, museum, the Conchian Museum. And you have wild fact sheets from Wild Singapore. So this is where, when I'm not sure what I'm looking at or I found to find out some of the animals, um, what they actually are. These are some of the database that I actually um, could find and discover for myself. Okay, and also I want to encourage you to get involved in marine conservation. So here are some groups that we can follow. We have Lepa in SG and Little Green Men. They are run by amazing youth. You can find listings of environmental related events and activities at Lepa in SG. Little Green Men, they organize coastal cleanup. So you can join them if you're interested. And to explore Singapore's reef, by diving, you can reach out to Hantu Block and our Singapore Reefs. If you want to know more about marine science, you can follow St. John Island's Marine Laboratory. And also, you, if you are interested in going out to the field and getting your hands dirty and also learning a bit of science, you can contact Team Seagrass 
for citizen science opportunities. So there are still so many groups out there doing such great jobs. So please do a little search on them also. You might be able to find what you like. So I must say, throughout my marine conservation journey, this family has been such a great push. Okay, so the support from the marine community is very strong. And it's really like the old kampong spirit. You share your up and downs, they will cheer for your success, and they are there when you, know, you hit a roadblock. Okay? And many of them here, they inspire me to do, want to do more for the community and for the environment. And that really keeps me going. And of course, to protect and conserve what we have, our natural heritage, the community also need all of your help to do your part for the environment. So it can be just as simple as being a, being a little more conscious of your own action because whatever this little thing that you do, it can set off a certain impact to the environment. Or, you know, if you can even go out there with your friends, with your families to rediscover our green and blue spaces. Okay, so we really need all of you to go there and see what we really have because if you know what we have, then you know how to protect them and cherish them. Okay, so with this, I end my sharing and I will now hand the time over to Leslie for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Okay, let me just uh, share my slides and we'll move on with the Q&A. Okay, so the first question for you, Sam, is what inspired you to volunteer in marine conservation? Mm, so this is actually a good question. So from young, I was very attracted to the sea. And also as a user of the sea, I wanted to give back. So spending a lot of time underwater for work and leisure made me realize that, you know, how coral reef and the marine animals within, they are also precious and at the same time so fragile. And because we don't get to learn about all these marine animals and the state of the ocean and environment in our formal school education, I want to reach out to the public, especially uh, the younger ones with what I've learned from years doing research and uh, through this engagement with the public, I also hope that you know people can go out to the sea, go out to the coastal habitat more often so that they can be, they can be more aware of the rich biodiversity that we have and to realize that you know at the end of the day the sea and us we are all interconnected in that sense. Okay, so it's very nice to hear that um, you were inspired to give back and you make use of your, your own knowledge, your own background to uh, help bridge the gap between um, knowledge about the sea and the community. Hmm. Okay, the next question. What is your favourite marine animal? <laughs> wow, this is a tough question. I have so many favourite. I cannot answer. Okay, actually, I really like sharks. So my favourite, favourite, favourite is great white shark. And I had the opportunity to go to South Africa to do an internship with Great White Shark during my final year um, as a final student. Uh. So that is how and why I really wanted to do a marine biologist. So after you come back to Singapore, it's like, ah, there's no Great White Sharks here. And the sharks here are like, like small. <laughs> so okay, like, everything is important. But currently, this, the top one is still Great White Shark. But I have, still, I have a lot of favorites. So I'm still a shark person. <laughs> okay, so even though we don't have great white sharks here, we do have uh, other types of sharks, right? So yes, what, what are definitely. some of the sh what, what, are, what sharks can we find in Singapore? Oh, we have bamboo sharks, we have coral cat sharks. Yeah, and then we have a lot of um, reef sharks. So black tips, we have them also. So they are all hiding. You need to have good eyes and patience to spot them and a lot of luck. So throughout my years of diving, I think four or five years, I only seen twice. <laughs> yeah. But um, there are also groups uh, working on sharks. So let's say bamboo sharks. You have the team from James Cook University. They're actually looking for them. So if you happen to spot any shark, do feel free to take pictures and send it, send it to them. Mm. Okay, so we do have a few species of sharks in Singapore, which Sam named. And I mean, even though it, it might be hard to see them, they are there and there are actually groups dedicated to studying some of these creatures. All right, the next question is, I'm new to marine life. What are some common species I might find along our shoreline in Singapore? 
Mm. So this one, I'll encourage you to actually go out during low tide. So find the days with low tide. Go out to shops that are actually really accessible, like East Coast Park, Pasiri. So just go there and have a little walk along the beach. And you might find things like sea cucumbers, you find sea stars, and then you also see, if you're lucky, you can find some sea slugs, which are really interesting, okay? They can be really colorful, they can camouflage. But do be careful also, because sometimes we have um, stonefish that can easily camouflage themselves and they look like rock. So if you want to take um, uh, a walk there, so just be careful to wear covered shoes and look where you step. Mm. So corals are also there. So um, different, different habitats have different, features different types of animals. So do take some time to go to different areas to explore in that sense. So if you want to find out more, I think NPAS is also doing guided walks at St. John's Island. So there are also groups out there conducting nature walks. So do feel free to reach out to them also. So they can actually share more with you and they are actually very, very good with spotting these animals. Okay, so just along our shoreline, the intertidal area, you can find a variety of creatures like, hmm. like coral, sea cucumbers, even sea slugs. And you don't have to travel too far from the shore to see them. And as uh, Sam mentioned, there are several groups that offer guided walks if you want to learn more about these creatures. And at NParks, we also have an intertidal watch program where you can be trained to identify and help document these creatures and I think maybe later on we'll try and send you the link to that page if anyone is interested to find out more about this program. So I hope this answers the question. Next, how can working adults or students contribute in marine conservation? Mm, so I really encourage working adults and students to get involved. So if you are really interested in marine conservation, so volunteer a little of your time or resources, you know, to organizations that can, and all these resources can be really useful for some organization. So for students, if you're interested in marine conservation, it's good to start volunteering or intern getting some internship with some of these groups here. So you can even start a project or a campaign in your school to get your friends interested in marine conservation or to know more about certain marine animals. So feel free to reach out to anyone in the marine community. So I'm sure they'll be most happy to help with you, help you to do all these projects, to fact check, to come up with ideas. So yeah, do feel free to reach out to us. <laughs> yep, yeah, uh, I think Sam shared a lot of resources earlier and a lot of groups that you can reach out to. And I'm sure they'll be more than happy if you approach them to volunteer. And um, it, you, can, you can start small, your own circle, your own school, your own family and friends. Okay, next question. How does trash on the beach affect marine life? Mm, so this is a question I get a lot. So if you, especially during this, this season that like, you know you've seen a lot of um, news report on how East Coast Park has a lot of trash right so this trash on the beach if they go to the sea okay so they might end up entangling some of the marine animals right and then if they are small and they break out into tiny pieces microplastic or micro fragments they might end up in some of the marine animals stomach because they don't have good eyes like us okay so they might mistaken them as food so bigger trash, like glass bottles, you know, you have your um, big cylinders, you have big containers, bicycles, all these things, if they end up in the water, so what happens is um, they can crush and destroy some of these coral reefs that are home to marine life, right? So and corals, they actually take very long to grow. So for them to recover back, it might take a long, long time. And because the, their homes are destroyed, the marine life had to find some other place to stay, okay? So um, the trash on the beach also. So some of them, we might find animals being trapped. And okay, so trash, let's say like containers or like bottles, some of the animals can find their way inside and they might not be able to get out. So this is also a problem. We also see a lot of long life nets, okay? So all these nets, they're able to catch a lot of animals and if they go, and flow along with the tide, they might end up on the beach. And this will uh, bring a lot of animals that you know, they get tangled with it. So this can be a problem also. So trash on the beach not only affect marine life, 
they also affect us in terms if they go down the food chain, we might end up eating them. And also, if you have trash on the beach, you won't even want to go to the beach to enjoy yourself, right? So they might affect some kind of um, tourism and our, our mood also. Mm. And also some of them can be quite fragile and sharp. So if they are broken, so it can be quite tricky also. So if you're doing beach cleanup, be careful also, wear covered shoes and do not pick up any sharp stuff. Okay, so um, trash is harmful for marine life. Some animals might mistake it for food or sometimes it can trap or, and even hurt the animals. And it also uh, contaminates the marine environment and affects the delicate balance which many of these creatures need to survive. And, you know, our environment is interconnected. At some point, it will come back to affect us as, as well. So bottom line is, you know, dispose of your trash responsibly or even better, try to avoid generating so much trash. Next question. Do I need to be a diver to volunteer? Mm, you definitely don't have to because there are so many groups out there working on different marine conservation causes, different habitats, different animals. And there's also a lot of opportunities to volunteer in marine conservation. And you can also support this organization in managing like social media. You can also follow them, go on road shows to do some public engagement, talk to the public, sharing the experience. So if you can really talk, this is somewhere that you can go also. And also even provide um, logistical help. So you just need to find a course or an animal that you really like and you start from there. Okay, so I think uh, even during your presentation, you talked about how there are different ways to contribute. You know, there's some which some mm. people who can do the research, so that one you might need to dive, but there's still other ways like, you know, the, the beach cleanups and you know helping out on social media. And there's also different, uh, even within the marine environment, there's different habitats, which you do not need to be a diver to access, such as the intertidal areas. Mm. Okay, so you do not need to be a diver to volunteer. That's true. To add in also, yeah, so you have teams working on mangrove, on seagrass, on the intertidal zone that you don't have to get really, really wet. So it's really um, accessible to different levels of volunteers. So if you're a diver, they're definitely uh, hantu bloggers. They have our Singapore Reef to reach out to if you want to do your part in marine conservation. Yep, many ways that you can contribute. Okay, next question. Mm, hold on for a moment. Right. Okay, what is one takeaway from your conservation journey? Mm, so I've learned that you are actually not alone in this journey. So what you have to do is to find your support group. And I'm glad that I found mine. So they have really been supportive throughout the journey and have given me a lot of opportunity to grow as a person and also to grow our Singapore Reef as a community. So just don't be afraid to ask questions. They're all very, very helpful. And all the little things and lessons you take from them are actually very, very valuable. So this is what I, I have. Okay, that's very nice to hear. Like connecting with people is uh, very important. And I think, you know, many times during a presentation, you did describe the Friends of Marine Park as like, like a family. So mm. it's really nice to hear that this has become um, more than just like a cause that you advocate, but having this community that you can rely on, I'm sure it helps keep you going in this scene as well. So thank Definitely. you very much, Sam, thank for you. sharing today. Mm -hmm. The work which... Uh, your team at Friends of Marine Park, I think, really exemplifies how multifaceted conservation is. You know, you need people from all walks of life. Uh, it's really a community effort and everyone can play a part. So here at NParks, we recognize ground-led initiatives like Friends of Marine Park as key stakeholders, which is why community engagement is one of the thrusts of NParks' Nature Conservation Master Plan our systematic approach to conserving our biodiversity and transforming Singapore into a city in nature. For more information, do check out the links being shared in the Zoom chat or watch our first NPART Spotlight Talk on YouTube. In it, our group director, Lim Liang Jim, outlines this plan. On our YouTube channel, you can also catch up on previous sessions of NPART Spotlight. 
We also have other Festival of Biodiversity activities being live streamed, so do keep a lookout. Now, NParks just released a new book called A Review of Garden Bird Watch, which features observations of birds in our parks and gardens, gathered by citizen scientists as part of our Garden Bird Watch program. Tomorrow on NPARC Spotlight, one of the book's authors, Lo Pingwen, will be sharing some of the trends and highlights observed. So join us at 10.30 on Zoom or YouTube to find out how our birds have been doing. You can register for the Zoom session at go.gov.sg slash spotlight 13 September. The registration link for tomorrow's talk will be sent in the chat. And don't forget that we have lots more biodiversity activities for all ages from the 5th to 26th of September. Visit the Festival of Biodiversity webpage for more details. Finally, if you are inspired to support our local biodiversity, we hope you will consider making a donation to NPARC's registered charity and IPC, Garden City Fund. 100% of your contribution will go into species recovery projects, conservation, outreach and education programs to support our flora and fauna. You can make a donation at go.gov.sg slash give to FOB 2020. This link will also be shared in the chat soon. And this brings us to the end of today's session. A big thank you to Sam and Friends of the Marine Park for their support. And thank you too to our audience for staying with us. Do share with us your feedback by scanning the QR code on my screen. We hope to see all of you again soon, but till then, have a great weekend, take care and stay safe.